Hi everybody, it's Lavinia. Welcome to my channel. I am excited for this video. This is an unboxing and swatching of the Derwent Graffitint pencils. It's this right here, this set right here, it just arrived today. It is still sealed and I, as you know, I am working with the Faber-Castell water soluble graphite and these are have graphite and tint in them so that it's a combination of both having like almost like a color pencil watercolor and graphite in there um so it says here in english it says use dry derwent graphite tint provides just a hint of color but but adding water transforms the tint into rich, vibrant shades available in 24 color tints ranging from soft grays, blues, and greens to glowing russets, plums, and browns. Derwent Graphite Tint is ideal for landscapes, animal studies, and portraits. And they also come in a 12 set, 12 tin set, and I believe you can also purchase them open stock. So if you use up one color, you can get them open stock so I'm gonna go ahead and open this up it actually arrived a day early it was supposed to arrive tomorrow oh so that's interesting so the top is not sealed okay here we go So this is what they look like. They have a metallic barrel. And let's take a look at, the, look at the colors and then we'll go ahead and swatch them. So the barrel has here England, Derwent Graffy Tint, has a little, looks like a little water brush here. And then it has the name and the number, it looks like it's probably like a lot of white paint in there, but it looks like this one says port. And here's the, the um, tip of the pencil. Seems to match the other end, but you know, we'll swatch these and take a look. And this is just my Master's Touch watercolor sketchbook. Well, I can see some of the graphite in there with it. So you can see the color and then that grayish tone from the graphite. So this one is port. This one is called juniper. That almost looks like a purple and then that looks like a lavender. So let's take a look. It almost looks like a lavender. I guess I was thinking of juniper, like our juniper trees here are green. So juniper. I'm going to then use the water brush to swatch that out. The next one is aubergine, and that's number three. Hmm, that's interesting. It says, looks like there's a two here. Or zero one on the opposite side right there. I don't know if you're able to see it. But aubergine in, I believe, means eggplant. Aubergine. It's almost like a soft water cut, soft color pencil I should say as it goes down. Virgin. This one is number four. It says dark indigo. Yeah this one here too it has a TJ. I wonder what that stands for what that means. Indigo. I think the 
box is a little bit bigger. Just so we can really see them. Hmm. Just this one looked like it was a little bit messier. And this one too looks like it has one Y one W. Don't don't know what that means. May have to go to their website and check it out. Oops. Port. All right, so now we're at this one. Looks like a pretty peacock color to me. And this one is called Shadow. So you can use these dry or wet. You could probably combine them. I. I'll probably do that separately in a different swatch where I'll combine the colors just to see how many more colors you can get besides just these 24. This one is called Steel Blue. I like the way you can, it's almost like those tritone pencils that have more than one color in it and I think it's just that graphite that is showing up. This one is called Ocean Blue. This one is called Slate Green. And Slate, probably because it has that graphite in there. Does that make sense? Next one is Green Gray. If you have these pencils, let me know in the comment section what you think of them. If you use them for the portraits, for landscapes, for pet portraits, or maybe a combination of all of them. This one is called Meadow. This looks like a yellow green. Oh, you can see that graphite in there, see? It's probably going to be the closest to yellow that you have in this set because I don't see any yellows in here. This one's called Ivy. It almost looks the same as the meadow, but now it's a little bit darker. Maybe this one just has more graphite in it and maybe a tinge darker of green. This one's called Sage. I'm gonna have to test these out of my coloring books too, on the coloring pages, maybe the thicker ones where I would be able to use water because some coloring books, the pages are too thin, I wouldn't be able to do that. This one's called Chestnut.
And I don't know if you can tell, but there is like a shine to them, and that's probably the graphite. If you saw my video on the rose that I'm using, I mentioned that the graphite, when it's dry, it does have that shine to it, and then when I put the water on it, it uh, dissolves to matte. This one is called Russet. going to be interested to see how this one this one is a little bit darker but seems close to that chestnut but that's probably good for the values you know as you're coloring in you do want that separation that value where some are light some are dark this one's called cool brown I like these barrels. This one is called Coco or Coca, Coco. Well, that's a nice rich brown. Very nice. I like this Coco. This one is called Autumn Brown. It's probably the closest one to maybe a red in here, unless this port has that. So again, Autumn Brown. I wish we were in Autumn right now. It's so hot out there. Let me see how many more colors I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have to leave a little bit more space. This is a pretty one too. Autumn brown. This one's called Storm. I think the Koi Noor tricolor tritone pencils had one called Storm. And since it said pet portraits, I wonder if I can use any of these to draw in stormy weather or Kyrie. This one's called Warm Gray. Looks like a lighter version of this. This one is called Midnight Black. I wouldn't say it's that dark of a black. I think I would probably use my Equarel pencils if I wanted a darker black, that 8B. This one is called Mountain Gray. They spell gray differently. Um, mountain Gray. So it is, it is different than these two. This one is called Cloud Gray. So all the grays are definitely different but you can use these for shadows as well. And this one's called Cool Gray. I'll put that here. Ooh, this has some blue to it. I like that one. Yeah, this Mountain Gray looks like it has a little bit of red to it, as does this one. 
And then there's white. I wonder how they get graphite into white. I don't know if we can see it here. Okay. All right, let's get the water and start swatching. I might put, want to put a little bit more port here. Right. Oh, I should just show you up close first as they look dry. Oops. Okay. So let's start here with port. That's pretty, it does melt nicely. Now with juniper. It's pretty lavender lilac color. Aubergine, which again means eggplant. Yep, that definitely is. It's a pretty purple, pretty eggplant purple. And I'm just leaving the section where it's dry pencil to then compare with the wash. Dark indigo. That too is very pretty. And this one is shadow. And it probably also depends on the watercolor paper that you have. This sketchbook isn't the best of watercolor papers, but it is doing the job. Then steel blue. And ocean blue. Ooh, that's pretty. That is a pretty color. Slate green. That too is very nice. Again, very pretty colors for the landscapes, for muted, um, you know, muted tones is what they look like. Gray, green, gray. That too is very pretty. And meadow, which looks like it would be the closest that they might have to yellow. Yeah. Like a greenish yellow. I can see that, you know, really like a sunlit meadow. Very pretty. Now this one is called Ivy. Just a darker value, it looks like, of the meadow. Now here we're getting into the browns. So this one is called sage. It's pretty. And this one is chestnut. Oh, that's very nice. I 
I was just doing some sketches here of an acorn and that just kind of reminds me of that. These I used my Master's Touch watercolors. Pretty there. The next one is called Russet. So let's take a look at this one. I almost want to say because of the name Russet makes me think of red that maybe this one ought to be chestnut and this one ought to be russet, but let's see, cool brown. Next one is cocoa. Just seems a, a warmer or darker version of the chestnut. Autumn brown. That's pretty. Reddish brown. Then here we're getting into the grays. So here's storm. And here's warm gray. Here's the midnight black. I suppose on the amount of water, but that does not look like midnight black to me when it's wet, but I suppose you can put layers. Mountain gray. Cloud gray. And then this one is cool gray. I like that with that little tinge of blue in there. Okay, so there's the swatch. And so here again, we have the port. We have juniper, aubergine, dark indigo, shadow, it's pretty, steel blue, so this is a little bit of more of a gray than that. Ocean blue, really pretty. I like the slate green. The green gray. Meadow, which is probably the closest to yellow that you're going to find in here. Ivy. Sage. Chestnut. Russet. Cool brown. Cocoa. Autumn brown, another pretty reddish brown. Storm. Warm gray. Midnight Black, Mountain Gray, Cloud Gray, and Cool Gray. And these grays, you I can tell here that they are all different values. So I can't wait to use these in a drawing. And again, if you have these, just let me know what you think of them, what you've used them for, uh, the type of drawings or paintings that you've done. And... Hope you like, share, subscribe, and I will see you soon. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Take care. Bye.